Hi everyone, welcome to Mythbusters. I mean, the electric supercar channel. This week we're gonna evaluate the temperature control system for my battery modules. Let's get to it. Before we get started, first a word from our sponsor, Timu. So I ended up sticking to their automotive section. So we'll try some of these out and show you how they work. All right, so this is their battery charger down there. That's my Porsche battery. It's been sitting for a while, so I'm sure it could use a little juice. We'll plug it in and see if it works. All right, we'll plug it in, it says off. We'll go ahead and hook it up to the battery. Oh, even says charging, I didn't have to do anything. This looks like 85% power, it's charging at 3.5 amps at 14.7 volts. So there it is, 90%, 2.9 amps, 14.7 volts. It's even got a little fan or something I can hear to kind of keep things cool. Looks like it's ramping down the amperage as it's getting closer to 100%. All right, there it is. So again, this swivels, which is nice. Oh yeah, and it's actually got some fine adjustments. So this one's a metric. So it's got eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 17. All right, so this is a set of security bit Torx drivers. Yeah, that's got like a little hole in the middle. Yeah, very nice. So it's got this style of adapter, so it should fit into my driver. Oh yeah. All right, so we'll try out some of these microfiber cloths here. Hey, the only way I can tell if they're good is like if you can kind of grab your fingerprints that those fibers really want to grab things. Oh yeah. I don't know how else to describe it, but when you can like drag your finger and you can kind of feel those fibers uh, pulling against it. So these are, these are the real deal. All right, next one, this is a little socket set. All right, so this has got 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 and a half, 5, 4 and a half, and 4. It's got a little handheld driver as well as a little ratchet. Oh yeah, it's pretty fine. Oh wow. I don't have one of these. This is like a, one of those flexible ones. Allows you to kind of do things around corners. It's got a little swivel adapter. Metric, H4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then you've got Torx, so T40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. So again, just a good little tool set. So I've always wanted to try this one. Got like some of those deep crevices and they get like food crumbs or things stuck in it. Um, you just, this one even shows it on a keyboard, but just press it in and then you take it out and it takes all that junk with you. It's such a weird consistency. Let's go try it out. All right, so we're gonna try it here. This is in the Porsche on the center console. And you can see there's just dust and stuff. So we're just gonna stick it here. I think they say just kind of press it. Oh my gosh, that is so satisfying. That is so clean. All right, well, I just tried out some of those Timu products and I have to say they are pretty good. The products come very quickly. Timu, besides having really low prices, they also gave me a special discount coupon code for 30% off. So I'll leave a link in the description below. For those of you who are new, let me explain what's going on. So behind me is a 2014 Porsche Cayman and I'm turning this electric. It's gonna have dual motors, all wheel drive and about 900 horsepower. To power that, I've chosen some batteries with pretty high output. There are some questions about how this is gonna be cooled. I have designed a system. There are still several people that say, I don't think that's gonna work. So today we're gonna to see how it works. For those who are a little bit newer to the EV world, most electric vehicles have a system to kind of regulate or control the temperature for batteries. This is important for cold climates as well as warm climates. Batteries usually like to be in the same temperature range that people like to be in, around 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There are a couple other situations where battery temperature control can really help. Batteries do not like to be charged below freezing. Using temperature control to heat the batteries will allow for better charging. There is also something called DC fast charging. This is where you are able to charge the batteries really quickly. However, it does tend to generate a lot of heat. Having a temperature control that can actually cool the batteries during this process is also important. We're gonna look at two different battery constructions. This is an LG Chem. This has a pouch style battery. Pouch style batteries are common for high power applications such as hybrids. This one comes from a Chrysler hybrid minivan. Hybrid batteries are made to charge very quickly when the vehicle is regenerating, but also discharge very quickly when the vehicle needs to accelerate. Very similar to the other battery, this one is also an LG Chem battery. It also has pouch style cells. It is also used for the quick application of power. This one has 2.6 kilowatt hours of energy and weighs 40 pounds. That one has 1.6 kilowatt hours of energy and weighs 18 pounds. 
So essentially, if I have two of these, that gets me 3.2 kilowatt hours of energy for about 36 to 38 pounds, where this is 40 pounds for 2.6. You get a lot more energy and power from these than you do from this. You might be saying this makes the logical sense and this is clearly the best battery. However, you will notice one big difference. This has cooling features on the side. So these cooling features go in between each of the cells to help cool. This has no cooling features. So this is an actual cell right here and the cell is encased in kind of a plastic pouch. These have aluminum fins that go in between each pouch to help cool. It's got a big surface area. Aluminum is a very good conductor of heat. You are though required to cool through plastic to actually cool the battery itself. The question I have and what we're trying to find out is this I'm going to be cooling through the plastic here, which is a little bit thicker. That you're going to be cooling through the aluminum through this plastic, which is a little bit thinner. So the question is, is there a difference? How much of a difference? And is it going to be a problem? So we're going to have Miss Researcher go through our evaluation Hello. process. The heat exchange plate will be cooled or heated to provide a temperature difference. The battery module will be set on the plate and temperature readings will be taken at various time intervals to discover the rate at which the batteries can exchange heat. I've got this warming up. It's about it's set to 175, but there is some losses and such. I've got a uh, cast iron plate under here, and then this one. So you got 119. So there were some questions about the capability, the cooling capability, trying to cool through the uh, plastic casing. Um, the pouches are plastic. So if you're cooling through this plastic or this plastic, I don't know that there's a big difference, but we're going to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that one on here aluminum side down so we can conduct the best we can. And I'm gonna open up the end plate and take a reading from one of the end, like the tabs of the cells. We're gonna put the timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna see what the temperature changes in about 10 minutes and that'll allow us to kind of identify how quickly the heat is being transferred. Oh God. Yeah, right around 14 degrees C. So we'll go ahead and start taking some measurements again. So 16.5. I'll go ahead and take this off. I'll let the plate kind of renormalize back to around 120 Fahrenheit, then do one of the other cells. So this says 53.7, 121. So we'll go ahead and put it on. All right, we're approaching the 10 minute mark, so we'll go ahead and start uh, taking some measurements. Right around 60.6. In true Mythbusters fashion, we're not gonna just do this test once. We're gonna do it lots of times, make sure the results are repeatable. So we will try again with cooling instead of heating. It is time for the cold experiment. So I just used an ice cream bucket, filled it with water. So I got some big blocks of ice. I'm gonna put this cooling plate on it, let things kind of get to a steady state. And then I'll put the battery module on it. Let's see how much cooling we get. So 33 even, 68, 19.8. Yeah, it's starting to become a little unstable. Trying to balance a big metal plate and a battery on top of an ice cube. Okay, five minutes in, we're at 17, no, 18. And 64.3. Right, 61.3, 16.3. We'll call that 14.9. There you go, nice shiny top, but it is now slanted and buoyant. Jeez, this thing is so unstable.
So we got all the data for heating and cooling. Let's look at the results. All right, so the results are in and indeed the battery with the aluminum plates cools and heats better. So it is a better way to transfer the heat to or away from the battery. All right, so you might be wondering what is the final verdict with all this cooling or heating? And I'm actually pretty happy with what I've got. Let me show you why. So I used this battery on my previous build and it's actually a very good battery. The aluminum features there, though they actually caused me a huge problem with my last build. I believe that they're not completely isolated from the energy itself. And I would think if these are isolated, you shouldn't get any voltage. But when I connect uh, one side to the, essentially to the power and the other side to the cooling, you actually get some voltage. So, so it kind of started out around 10 volts. To me, there, there shouldn't be any voltage difference there. So those aluminum features provided kind of a capacitance effect where there would actually be charge that would build up on those aluminum features. And because of that, I had to do a thermal pad. Now the thermal pad will kind of electrically isolate the aluminum, but still allow some degree of heat transfer. Now with that being said, that's actually gonna make heat transfer a little bit worse. I do have a trick up my sleeve. This is all done by one side of the battery module. I am doing it on both sides. That's right, I'm gonna double my heat transfer abilities. That puts me on par with the battery that has the aluminum. That puts it actually better than that, especially with that. All right, just like the Mythbusters, I am sure there are plenty of people that are gonna get in the comments and tell me exactly what I did wrong. That is great. That does bring up a point about comments. All right, comments. Comments are amazing. It is one of the ways I've been able to learn as quickly as I have is by really using the knowledge of all of my users and be able to kind of implement and learn from them. I think there's a couple different mindsets. Some people just get behind the keyboard and they like to post something just to post something. Um, others like to rile things up. I think most people are trying to be sincere and thoughtful with their comments. I think this video will stir up a lot of good comments, a lot of things that I can learn from and other people can learn from. I think there is a great way to help phrase the comments that will really help people understand. I think most comments are there to be encouraging and to be instructive. Um, I'm even okay with some people saying like, hey, you're doing it wrong. I think the way that I and other people learn is if that is phrased in a way that's helpful, not like a So if you're struggling with this, there's this great tool called ChatGPT. Type your comment there and say, rewrite nicely. I also think YouTube uses comments kind of like a word plot. And if the words are trending or uh, positive, YouTube will kind of cycle that video to the top of people's feeds. The videos go much better. So that's another thing to consider. That's enough of me talking. I look forward to seeing all your comments. See you next time. Does anyone watch their videos when they are done or do they just toss them into the YouTube pile of junk? I'm quite blown away by the money that is being wasted on this, yet the oversights are equally mind blowing. It's kind of like the guy that flips you off on the freeway and then proceeds to tell you how you should drive. 